What is going on YouTube? Hit it back making another brand new crypto TV episode. In today's video, we are going to be looking at XRP, Ethereum, Bitcoin, as well as the S&P 500. Well, guys, it's official, I believe as of yesterday, maybe two days ago, but pretty much yesterday, we confirmed that the S&P 500 is in a bear market. And what that means is when the stocks fall from its high down 20% or more, we're officially in a bear market. And then a crash would be considered 30% or more, which we're not in just yet. But I just want to show you guys the length and time that we're or the amount we're currently down right now and how much lower we need to go to be considered in a bear market so right now 20 percent was pretty much uh capped off yesterday we confirmed that currently down 21 percent a bear market would be us hitting lows at 3300 so another 10 percent down from where we currently are would set us into that bear market the only good thing we have going right now within the S&P is that we're becoming oversold on the daily and the fact that we're oversold now once again on the weekly charts here. Now, it is still very much possible that we can dip below our uh, oversold line here. We did it during uh, the pandemic in 2020. We dipped below not only the moving averages, but became oversold here. Notice that when we were retesting the moving averages before, we were not near oversold. We were trading at 38 on the relative strength indicator and we became oversold as we headed lower so we do have something good in that sense that we are much lower than we currently are maybe we'll see who knows 25 percent hopefully we don't actually enter a bear market on the s p 500 but it's definitely not a good sign for people investing in here my accounts are down everything is down as expected as anticipated you know this is yet again another reason to you know keep holding strong not to panic sell out this is not the first time we've seen this drop not only did the s p drop during uh, 2020 it just dropped during 2018 we saw crypto drop in 2017 2018 and now we're seeing it again in 2022 so it's not something that's new by any sense and we've already hopefully or i've already lived through this so i'm not surprised that we're seeing this again because obviously we can't just keep going up straight so hopefully you know we're close to the bottom within the s p hopefully we're close to the bottom within crypto maybe we bottom off soon and then start to head up. The S&P 500 is going to be first to swing back up before uh, crypto. That's for sure. Uh, we might honestly, you know, call a bottom at $20,000 and we could consolidate and slide sideways for another year. And I'm not trying to spread FUD um, before we start to see any sort of lift off. This was very similar in 2017 or in from 2017 into uh, 2021 when we saw the run. It was a lot of consolidation for two, maybe three years. We saw the run in 2021 here. We're ending 2022. Too. So we could have another year before or year and a half before we start to see maybe even two years before we start to see major runs back to the upside towards the end of 2023 into 2024 here. So I don't know when the bottom is going to be. Nobody can tell that we are extremely oversold on all these major cryptos. XRP is oversold. Ethereum. Bitcoin, this may be calling a short-term bottom. We could continue to scale lower. We're not entirely sure, but I'm going to try to cover all this in today's video. With that being said, definitely make sure to smash the like button, turn on post notifications, subscribe, and let's dive into today's episode. So guys, first and foremost, top 10 cryptocurrencies. I think they like... They used to have the total market cap of crypto right here, and it seems like they removed that because it was probably too scary for some people, uh, which is quite interesting. All right, you can see it right here. Total market cap is $940 billion, but they used to have a big right here. So we definitely broke through the trillion dollar uh, you know, net worth that crypto had on a global scale. We used to be at $3 trillion, which is also pretty incredible. But you can see everything is pretty much down now, except for stable coins. Most everything is down or catching up to one was uh, down here. So Bitcoin is now catching up to correcting lower. We already had XRP and the other cryptos correct down the past couple of days. So Bitcoin is catching up to these other altcoins here. And you can see right now, XRP has fallen stagnant. Um, we called this short. We've had a trade open. We've shorted XRP, Ethereum, and Bitcoin over the past two or three days now, if not four days. Um, and we've made quite a bit of profit. So I'm not really worried. There's still plenty of trades. Unfortunately, um, we could still make money in a bear market with prices dropping here. We only don't make money when we see stagnant sideways movement, which was expected to break and it did. You can see um, for XRP specifically, 
We've been in a descending fractal for quite an extended length of time. It started back in March here. We had all of April, all of May, and part uh, halfway through June before we saw a major dump. And you can see we are forming these lower high formations where prices kind of ping pong off this top resistance and this bottom support in a downwards trajectory. And when we hit bottom support, we tend to run or, you know, sideways consolidate. Uh, and when we hit the top resistance, we tend to bounce downwards, which you can see has happened on numerous occasions here. And here it is again happening where we're correcting lower. These typically have a bullish bias to breaking bullish, but we don't know when that's going to be. We could see another swing downwards before we see a run to the upside here, but it might take a long time to do that. Now, we called this correction here. We had a symmetrical triangle forming. We had lots of resistances. We had the uh, four-hour moving averages, which you can see are right here. We had a downtrend. We had the symmetrical triangle. There was a lot saying we're probably going to be dumping lower. The second we confirmed on the daily the price of XRP close us below our major support here, this price floor, which was on the 10th here, so about four days ago. We bought in for a short position on Bityard, and we shorted this, and we have been continuing to short here. I'm probably going to take profits very soon because we are oversold. I might actually do this after today's episode. Obviously, we do all this on BitYard. Hopefully, you guys took some profit or at least are going to maybe, you know, let me know if you've even made a, a profit on these trades because this was fairly easy to do. And we've talked about this on pretty much all of our episodes the past week or two, getting ready for the run and then buying in and then seeing the runs to the downside. But we took advantage of this on BitYard, the number one cryptocurrency leveraging exchange here. They have XRP, which is super cool, unlike other exchanges here, which is why I like to use BitYard over other platforms here. And we literally clicked market, typed in the amount of... Uh, Mar uh, margin or sorry leverage and then the amount of margin and we were able to short this to the downside and I've recently been doing the extremely uh, sh extremely low margin here the lowest we could do is 5x which is still fine with me and um, I was able to short this and make tons uh, a lot of profit off of this now for those that are new and haven't signed up to BitYard definitely click the link down in the description and then click get free crypto right here to earn some free crypto for those that are new that's their current promotion here but we were able to make money on XRP and we're currently botting off at oversold so there's a chance very similar to what we've seen in the past here of some consolidation sideways. So we're probably going to find some sort of support, maybe trend sideways, crack lower, swing back up. I don't know. Or we could just continue to scale lower. I'm not entirely sure, but it seems like we've hit a stalling point for right now. So I'm going to take, you know, either move stop losses down, open a new position, which is what I might actually do is move my, you know, take my profits now and then open a new trade for a short and keep a stop loss a little bit higher just in case that's the way of actually moving stop losses down on BitYard for those that are a little confused with what when I mentioned that. But the other cryptos like Ethereum also reference bottoms here, which is why, again, we might just consider taking profits. XRP we could play around with, but Ethereum has hit its low and it's also oversold here. This was Target. We discussed if we break through our major support here at 1740, we'd buy in for a short and we close this on the 10th uh, below our major support, which confirmed the general direction of the movement here. And that's why we bought in and have shorted this to the downside here. Now we're hitting our target here. So there's a good chance I'm going to take profits and uh, honestly not enter a trade on Ethereum and uh, kind of minimize just to XRP. Bitcoin as well is seeing an interesting play hitting 22K. Is this a previous support? No. And we're probably closer to 20,000 as a previous support. But, um, you know, we're sideways trading right now. You can see we did capitalize on the break. Or sorry, we were sideways trading. We confirm once again, similar to Ethereum and XRP bottom support. If we confirm closing below this, which it did on the 11th, then we bought in for a short. And since then, we've been in profits now. And you can see this. We're not yet out of support here. So we haven't hit this major resistance, which would be closer to 17. So there's a chance we could head lower. So you can move your stop losses down by selling off, taking profits, opening a new position and creating a higher stop loss just in case. Or we could set this out and try to wait for what's going to happen, you know, in the next coming days. Um, for those that don't know the reason or another reason why they saw the crash is the panic sell that your crypto isn't really your crypto. Celsius, which is an exchange at Binance, uh, locked withdrawals of Bitcoin and crypto for a couple hours or sorry i think it was a couple hours for binance and for and at the time of recording this still celsius being closed which means they have your crypto and they're not giving it back because they it, just like a bank 
put your crypto in, they give you a little ledger, and then they take your crypto and actually invest it elsewhere. So they're running low on liquidity, and people are trying to sell, which is having an issue uh, with their exchange, and that's why they've locked their liquid or locked their withdrawals. As for the S and P, there's a good chance we're going to continue to skew lower. You know, we were waiting for a meeting coming out with the Feds very soon. Hopefully tomorrow, I think, is the meeting, and there's a good chance they are going to be once again raising interest by either uh, 50 basis points or 75 basis points, which which, you know, is good and um, is going to allow, is most likely going to cause markets to dip lower. Interest rates are going to go up. I think the only thing we need to see is like June with lower inflation before we start to see markets come up. We need a, we need a peak and we need to start going lower. Markets would have probably broken bullish had uh, the May news came out that we uh, broke that we were lower on inflation, then we probably would have seen a run. But because we were higher than expected, that's what caused a dip. So until we start to get lower inflation, we're going to still see prices dip lower, which sucks. All around, it sucks. Like this was a terrible time to be buying in. Um, but that's just life. You know, we'll we'll keep dollar cost averaging over the next coming years. Like even if we fall down to here, let's say we we do something like this and continue to scale lower, and then eventually, you know, it takes a that was not what I wanted to do. But let's say we fall lower and then we start to run up here and eventually hit all time highs, which might be, you know, 2026, 2025, you know, three years from now, which would suck four years from now. But we can be dollar cost averaging. So let's say we bought here and here and here. Well, when we start to head back down, we can either A, buy there, we can buy at the bottom, and we can continue to scale our positions. And every time we buy here, we're lowering our, our break even. So let's say break even originally was, was right here you know, in this region, as we dollar cost average down and buy here, it can drop ourselves right here, which means we'll be breaking even much sooner. Uh, than waiting, you know, years for us to eventually hit all-time highs, if that makes sense. So that's why it's good as dollar cost average down. It's not like we one lump sum bought in here and we now have to wait. We're never investing again, and we now have to wait eventually for prices to run back up in four years. Uh, what we can actually do is buy in at smaller intervals as we fall lower and allow us to lower that break even. So instead of us breaking even in 20, 2026 or 2020. Four, no, 2026 in four years or five years, we can break even in two years, much sooner, which is nice. So that's pretty much it, though. That's going to wrap up today's video. Definitely make sure to subscribe, turn on post notifications, smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm, and I'll see you in tomorrow's video. Peace.